Today we're going to talk about construction of an interim removable partial denture, which is sometimes known as or called a flipper. There are basically different types of removable partial dentures that are temporary. The name is usually based upon their individual uses. There's an interim partial denture, a transitional denture, and a treatment partial denture. An interim partial denture is indicated when the age, health of the patient, or lack of time precludes more definitive treatment. In a young person, they may have lost a tooth from trauma and it's too early to make a fixed partial denture because of the size of the pulps that are remaining in the natural teeth. In an older person, an unexpected loss of one or more teeth, and when lengthy time for treatment is a problem, the interim partial may be used. It's also used while bone, while bone is recontouring before final treatment begins. A transitional denture is planned when some or all of the remaining teeth are not restorable with predictable success, but for some reason, physical or mental, the patient wants to retain his teeth. The teeth will be lost over a longer period of time, and the patient needs some type of functional prosthesis with which to masticate over that period of time. It will be repaired several times as teeth are lost until such time that it becomes necessary to remove all the remaining natural teeth. Since this is an all acrylic partial denture, it is worn for a long period of time, we use the IPN, which is a stronger tooth, and we have a try-in appointment and process the denture using the harder acrylic L199. This partial denture is coated differently than the interim or the treatment temporary partial denture. The code used is a 5211 for the maxillary and a 5212 for the mandibular. It is defined as an all acrylic base permanent removable partial denture, including any clasp and rest that are requested for this prosthesis. A third type of interim denture is called a treatment partial denture, and it may be used for a variety of reasons or purposes. In one instance, it may be used to carry tissue conditioner to an area where the oral tissues are in poor health, and it is needed to deliver the tissue conditioner to the area to establish health. Another treatment partial might be used where a tooth has been extracted, and to prevent the posterior molar from moving anteriorly, a partial denture is placed to maintain the space. If any of these temporary partial dentures are worn for too long, there's a danger of marginal gingivitis and chronic periodontal disease because they lack support from the natural teeth by means of rest seats and rest on the partial. Whenever you perform one of these services with a temporary or an interim partial denture, you need to fill out the proper paperwork for the project. There are step cards available in the cabinets where, they're, where the different cards are kept, and you should get that card and have each step filled out along the way. It's also kind of a guide for you to determine what steps need to be done on this patient and which ones don't. It's kind of a guide for that. Listed on this page are all the things that you can possibly need to construct the temporary partial denture yourself. Pull up this list when you're getting to make one so that you can get all the materials at once and don't have to make repeated trips to the dispensary. These are usually constructed in the laboratories, not in the clinic, because of the odor from the acrylic resin that's quite disturbing to patients. The first thing that you'll want to do is make an impression of the patient. Remember that you want to record all the soft tissues as well as the teeth. You want that soft tissue to extend to the hamular notch if it's a maxillary and covering retromolar pad and into the retromylohyoid fossas if it's a mandibular. You're going to make an impression to receive an interim and you want to ask yourself is there occlusion opposing the teeth to be replaced? 
If so, then you're going to have to make another impression of the opposing arch. You also need to ask yourself, is there occlusion and how do these casts come together and occlude? Will I need occlusion rims in order to mount the case properly in order to construct the interim partial denture? We will be using the Dense Ply Classic Teeth or the Ivoclair Teeth for the interim partial dentures. We do not charge more than what we actually have as far as cost from the laboratory to make these prostheses, so we must conserve on our cost. These teeth are one of the lines of teeth offered by the Dense Ply International Company. We carry them in the dispensary in only three of these molds that are shown on this mold board and in only three colors. The molds represent a small, a medium, and a large size mold. The colors represented are a light, medium, and a dark shade of yellow. You may order any of the teeth on the board as long as you're willing to wait for a special order, which usually takes about three days to get the teeth. There's also an expanded shade guide that's available at the window, which includes all the Vita shades except the bleaching shades. A tooth order form has to be filled out whenever you order teeth from the dispensary. We have two shade guides for acrylic resin colors of the gingiva. On the left is a set of Densefly Lucitone 199 shades. On the bottom right are the Kohler colors. These are not available at all laboratories. These lower shades offer a better selection for our African American patient, as sometimes the dense white colors are a little bit too pink. Record your selection of teeth and colors of the gingiva in the computer records. These guides are available for matching at the OHR clinic window, and some are available at the dispensary on second floor. Please return them after you use them, and be sure to record your information. Pour the cast in a gypsum product and trim the cast leaving the vestibular roll and a nice land area around the cast. Now ask yourself, can I mount this case by hand articulating the two casts without any doubt as to how these posterior areas approximate each other? Ask, can I stabilize the two casts in the proper position while mounting them? If the answer to these questions is no, then you need occlusion rims in order to mount the case accurately and a jaw registration record. So make the occlusion rims and schedule a second appointment to obtain your records. Don't even think about this mush bite as it is called. This is one of the most inaccurate ways to mount a case. Can you fit these records accurately on a cast when you record the soft tissue registration in the mouth? No way. The soft tissue of the cast made with an impression material will vary from the soft tissue registration in the mouth. Ah, I've got another idea. Can I use old occlusion rims made on another set of casts to mount this new set of casts? No, because the soft tissue registration on every cast is different, and the occlusion rims will not fit accurately on a cast other than the one on which it was made. If you attempt to use these types of records, you will surely have inaccuracy in your mounted case, which will translate to inaccuracy on your final denture. To mount a case accurately, you need to have tooth or occlusion rim contact that is in the form of a widely spaced triangle or even better rectangular arrangement. In this case, I was able to get tripod stabilization of the maxillary mandibular cast with only a maxillary occlusion rim. Sometimes maxillary and mandibular occlusion rims are necessary. The record bases must be adjusted to your desired vertical dimension before mounting the case, and it's a good idea to get a face bow to mount the maxillary cast if anatomical teeth are going to be used. A jaw registration of record is obtained to orient the cast, and the case is mounted after indices and a separating medium are placed on the cast. You're now ready to send this case to the laboratory for construction of the interim prosthesis. A laboratory should make the partial if it is to be worn for a considerable amount of time 
or if the patient is very aesthetic conscious, probably also if there's a lot of teeth that are going to be placed on this partial. The justification for that statement is that the heat-cured acrylic resin is much denser, the work is usually more aesthetic, and the fit is superior to what we would probably have produced in our own uh, clinic. The lab bill for this prosthesis is about the same as our charges. You can fabricate the temporary RPD and save your patient some money. It is also a very good experience for you as someone will present in your office who breaks a tooth and wants to leave your office with something in his mouth after you have extracted the tooth or teeth. It's not that difficult to do. You do need to have some teeth on hand and that is often likely after you've practiced a little while because you will be getting teeth back from the laboratory with your cases that you can save for such an instance. Uh, be sure to note that there are two charges codes for the interim and one is for lab constructed, the other one is if you do the case yourself. Uh, it's worth an extra point if you do the case yourself. In most instances, when constructing the temporary RPD, you will use two wrought wire direct retainers, one on each side of the arch. More than two cost you anywhere from 50 to 75 extra dollars for each direct retainer that you use. We allow only two wrought wire retainers. You must block out below the survey line if you are using the wire retainers. If you have posterior teeth with undercuts on the lingual on each side of the arch, you may construct an interim RPD with acrylic resin used for retention and not use any visible clasp. This requires the use of a horseshoe shaped major connector on the maxillary and the conventional type on the mandibular. You must block out major undercuts to just below the survey line so that the acrylic is active and it flexes slipping into the undercut for retention when placed in the mouth. Remember the partial is usually horseshoe shaped when utilizing this type of technique for retention and the molars must have some kind of an undercut on the lingual. Using this method does not require the wrought wire retainers. Triad does not flex. You will need wrought wire clasp with, when you're using triad material. Your block out when using the triad is up to the survey line and triad must be placed above your block out or you will have a gap between the tooth and the prosthesis. This will make it lack stability and retention. Bend round ortho wire 0.032 or 036 wire to fit the teeth on the cast. Now that block out should be on the cast when you actually bend these wires because if the a part of the wire that doesn't flex very well gets into that undercut, it can be a problem seating your denture. Ball clasps may also be used when you have an embrasure area that has an undercut and when that wire crossing over the occlusal surfaces does not interfere with occlusion. Place irregular bends on the lingual extensions to prevent rotation of the wire in the acrylic. Next, make certain that the wire clears the undercuts on the distal surfaces of the teeth before you apply acrylic. Set the ortho wires aside for a moment and begin to set the selected teeth to the desired arrangement on the cast. You may need to cut on the ridge lap area of the tooth to get the desired angulation for the maxillary anteriors. You also may use a slight amount of sticky wax, but keep it limited to the cervical area of the teeth. Try not to get it up onto the tooth very far because it's hard to clean off. Some will use a slight amount of super glue to tack the teeth into place. When the teeth are set, you will make an index to maintain the tooth position when we add acrylic to the prosthesis. Obtain the laboratory putty from the Junior Senior Lab Dispensary. We use this type of putty rather than the impression putty in the clinics. Impression putty is extremely expensive to use for this type of procedure. The mixing proportions for this putty are one measure that is leveled off to the top to 4 centimeters or 1.57 inches of the gel catalyst. Mix the two materials thoroughly until no streaks remain in the material and I recommend that you use gloves as it can get quite messy. 
re, uh, mix until all of the lines are gone. Make a roll of the mixed PBS putty. Lay the putty on at least two teeth on each side of the edentulous area and over your set teeth. Push or form it around the occlusal one-third to one-half of the denture teeth, making sure that you are recording the buccal and lingual surfaces of those teeth. Allow the material to set firmly. You should not be able to make a dent into the PVS with your fingernail and have it uh, leave a permanent depression in the material. It should bounce back if it is thoroughly set. Remove the index and trim it until you can get easy access to the areas where acrylic resin will be added for the base. You must overlap the occlusal and incisal edges by at least three millimeters for those teeth to stay in there well. Try to keep as much as possible as long as it does not interfere with your access to the embrasure areas from contact point to the cervical. You need to thin that anterior area so that it allows you better access. Note the red arrow indicates the area to be thinned. You may need to thin the buckle and the lingual area of the index in order to allow better access to your working area for the resin base. If you look in the upper left, you can see the thickness before, and in the picture right below it, you can see where you're shooting for. You want to be able to have enough room to get in there and work. You may remove the material using acrylic resin burst, or you can use that Bart Parker blade in the handle to actually cut the material off. But be sure to remove enough material until you have good access to the working area. After you're finished trimming the index, remove the index and the prosthetic teeth. Clean off the sticky wax from the cast and from the teeth so that that wax does not get into your final prosthesis. Place the teeth back into the index and sticky wax them with a very small dab of sticky wax on the surface to hold them into position. Do not get sticky wax into the index or the teeth will not be in the same position on your cast. Then you will place them back onto the cast. Before you place it back on the cast, Make sure you loot the wires in place. Place some sticky wax and loot the retentive wires on the facial surface away from the acrylic working area. Also keep it low enough so that it does not in interfere with seating your index. You're now ready to assemble the index on the cast. Place it on the cast and first Check to see that the index seats completely in the areas where you had the block out on the distal of those abutment teeth. If it does not, trim the index back in that position. Also check to see if it seats properly where you have added wax to attach the clasp. If not, trim it back a little bit so that it stays in place and is seated all the way. It's very important or your teeth will not be in the proper position when you cure with the acrylic resin. You can see in this example where it was necessary for us to trim around the area where we had looted the wires in order to allow that to seat completely. If we did not do this, then those teeth would be too long when we finish the partial. It looks like we're now ready to go. We did our block out. The wires were bent and placed and looted into position. The cast should be lubricated with Vaseline so that the acrylic resin does not stick into it. And the index is secure and the teeth are staying in place. We're ready to add acrylic. This slide shows the series of steps that you will use in the salt and pepper technique to add acrylic resin to the cast to form your prosthesis. First, take a piece of clear rope wax and place it on the cast to form the boundaries of your temporary partial. This will keep the material from running all over the place when you're trying to add it. 
be sure that you take the cast off of the mounting so that you can rotate it a little bit when that material is wet and actually help it by moving it to form that partial denture uh, replacement. Add a little liquid and then add some powder to it. And then, as I said, kind of rotate the partial or rotate the cast to form, help form the partial. Make sure that you get good wetted material near your denture teeth so that they do not pop off. Some people choose to put retention in that denture tooth. When I have four, like we had on this cast, I don't necessarily tend to do that. For, for a single or a, a couple of teeth, I would put some slits or some dovetails in the tooth to help retain the acrylic liquid. Get the pressure pot from the window and place it in the sink or on the uh, drain board. Make certain that the black gasket is in place. It's shown on the yellow arrow in the top picture. Fill that pot to overflow level with warm water, not hot. Hot would cause the monomer to boil and give you bubbles or voids in your final prosthesis. After you've filled it to an overflow, place the black lid, shown in the bottom picture, onto the pressure pot and place it into the press that is shown in silver. Start to tighten that press and you'll see the pressure rise within the pot. Take it up to about 25 pounds and let it set for approximately 15 minutes. In order to remove the prosthesis from the cast now, I removed the teeth from the cast on each side of the uh, prosthetic teeth so as to not interfere with rotation of the prosthesis off the cast and to eliminate those possible acrylic areas that have locked into the teeth, into the undercuts. Because of the deep undercut in the anterior, it's probably best to remove the prosthesis from the posterior first and rotate it uh, forward to get out of those undercuts. Next, we're going to polish the denture. I like to start on the lathe so that I can get uh, faster results. You want to thin the areas of the flange and you want to round off any sharp areas or any flash in that area. Look at the teeth next to the, the natural teeth. Make sure that any area that looks like it would go into an undercut is removed in order to aid seating the denture. You need to work with the acrylic resin until it's very smooth before you go to the pumice stage. The two wheels on your that you use in the final shine, one should be labeled acrylester and one pumice. Try not to ever get those mixed up because the pumice wheel needs to be wetted and the pumice will get into that gauze wheel. If you try to use acrylester with it later, you will get not very good results. So keep your uh, gauze wheels separate and labeled with an A or a P with a magic marker. Then use pumice to reduce the or smooth the roughness. There should be pretty much a high shine on that denture before it comes to the clinic with your patient. Acrylester or tin oxide will produce that really high shine on the prosthesis. The picture shows that we have a prosthesis that's now ready to be inserted into the patient's mouth. It's been trimmed nicely and has been polished. A second technique where you roll out the acrylic resin material rather than using the salt and pepper technique. This is shown in the following slides. Get out your roller board and roller. Lubricate the roller board on the thick side with some type of lubricant like I happen to use Vaseline and also lubricate your roller. Mix your material in a wax coated paper cup or in a some type of a jar or glass container. Don't mix it into plastic because the monomer will react with it. Then you stir it and you wait for a certain consistency that looks similar to what you see in the picture. This is something you have to just learn from experience. Roll out your material to a uniform thickness that's controlled by those ledges on the side of the board. And once you have tried to keep it in the form of an arch form. 
Then pick it up. You may need some Vaseline on your gloves in order to keep it from sticking. And adapt it well, starting at the depth of the palate, and then move outward to the flange areas. Trim the material while it's in a putty state. Use a barred Parker blade in the red lab handle to accomplish this. Adapt the material then to the teeth using a dappen dish with liquid and a dappen dish with powder and a brush where you take and dip the brush into the liquid, pick up a little bit of the powder, and adapt it well around all the denture teeth. You will need to finish the anterior flange if you were not able to adapt a little piece of that material in that area, then use the um, brush technique or the liquid powder technique in order to finish off that area. After you have your pattern built, then place it into the pressure pot as directed previously for 15 minutes, and then finish and polish the prosthesis. The use of a light cured material like Triad is also a possibility for making the interim denture. The only disadvantage of Triad is that it will not flex into any undercuts very easily. Triad will break before it flexes. So you would have to use uh, retentive clasp arms like wrought wires in order to get a, a retention on a Triad prosthesis. Bonding agent and or mechanical retention should be used to retain the denture teeth. Mechanical retention should be used really to assure the success with any of those methods discussed. Bonding agent alone may not be reliable when you're using triad. Use a triad gel around those retentive areas of the teeth to get into the really hard to reach areas. It works really well. In place of the acrylic resin, at the time you're ready to finish it off, then add triad material to your desired shape. Get it where you want it before you cure it in the light curing machine. Place the pattern in the triad machine and cure for approximately two minutes. Add air barrier coating to the surface of the triad and place it back in the machine and cure for three additional minutes. After you remove the prosthesis from the cast, turn it over and add air barrier coating to the palatal side and cure for one additional minute. One of the disadvantages of Triad is that it's very brittle, but that doesn't excuse the fact that we should have planned this prosthesis a little bit better. In the deep undercut on the labial, we should have blocked that deep undercut out with wax a little bit. Also, on the cast, we should have trimmed the vestibular fold there, the, the anterior of the cast should have been trimmed all the way down to the depth of the vestibule to make it easier to remove that prosthesis from the cast. Compared to acrylic resin, Triad is very brittle. It doesn't flex. It's going to break. Note the fracture line also that are, is noted with the two little arrows on the bottom picture on the left. This just points out what we should have done with this cast prior to making our prosthesis on it. The bottom picture shows how we have lowered the depth of the vestibule down to where you just get that turn so that the prosthesis can be easily removed. Then also we would have wanted to block that area out below the arrow slightly before we started our prosthesis. The horseshoe shaped form is often used when there's adequate posterior teeth present. The interim may be made and kept claspless. If slight undercuts are present on the linguals of the teeth and not completely blocked out, the acrylic resin can be designed to flex into those slight undercuts when the horseshoe design is used. Acrylic resin is the material of choice here. Triad will not flex. Ball clasp can be used for retention if they are in a position where there's no interference with the opposing occlusion. A try-in appointment should be done if the interim partial is to be laboratory processed and the teeth have already been removed. The teeth are attached to wax 
and the setup is tested. This will assure patient satisfaction of that final prosthesis. Upon delivery of the prosthesis, place it gently in the mouth and don't force it in. If you have trouble seating it, look in the position shown by the yellow arrow in the upper left picture. Oftentimes the acrylic resin flows into the undercuts on the cast of the teeth next to the prosthesis. These have to be removed in order to seat the prosthesis. Next, Try pressure indicator paste into the prosthesis and it will show you the areas that are interfering with placement. In this case, remember we had deep labial undercut, so sometimes you have to rotate it into position a little bit. In the end on this prosthesis, because of the extremely large undercuts in the labial area, it necessitated us to shorten the flange severely. Plan your appointments well in advance so that you can schedule a 24-hour adjustment and one about three days later when you're adjusting or delivering an immediate interim RPD. Believe me, the patient will want to see you. Ideally, deliver that interim on a Monday or Tuesday so that you can see the patient, say, on Tuesday and again on Friday when you've had teeth extracted and deliver one of these prostheses. You'll be using pressure indicator paste to check the inside of the denture, and you need articulating ribbon to check on the occlusion. Treatment is complete when the patient is lesion-free and it's been a minimum of 14 days after the delivery of the interim prosthesis. Make certain that all your paperwork has been signed at each experience and each appointment and turn in the paperwork to the prosthodontic secretary so that you get credit for one of these required experiences.